Hello everyone, welcome to another Inno tutorial civil engineering video. In this video, we are going to discuss the various type of load you need to consider when designing a building. As a structural engineer, we are always going to be dealing with loads and how a structure can resist those loads. A load is pretty much a force that a building or a structure needs to be able to resist. Load causes stress and deformations to a structure and it's our job as a structural engineer to make sure that a structure or part of the structure does not fail when these loads are applied. And the load can be applied vertically or laterally on a structure. So without further ado, let's discuss the type of load which you need to consider when designing a building. Let's start with vertical load. Vertical load or gravity load are those forces that are applied perpendicular to the roof or floor system. These loads are separated into two categories. They are dead load and life load. Dead load consists of the weight of the structural members that make up the structure in addition to all of the finishes that make the structure look nice and pretty. We call this dead load because they never change. On the other hand, life loads are loads imposed on the structure that are made up by the people who uses the structure and what they decide to place in the structure like furniture or storage. As a structural engineer, we take into account all of the materials when figuring out the dead load of a structure. This load could include insulation, dry walls, wood stored, flooring, brick veneer, etc. Individually, these items may seem fairly light, but when their weights are all added together, it can account for a significant amount of weight applied to the structure. This load are in addition to the self-weight of the structure, which could include the weight of the floor or roof decking and joists, beams, bearing walls, columns, brazing, etc. Dead load are always present throughout the lifetime of a structure, compared to life load which can come and go. Life load are harder to predict than dead loads because it is a bit challenging to predict exactly how many people will be using a space at a given time or how they will lay out furniture and store materials in a given space. When it comes to life load, we use code to figure out the magnitude of load depending on the country you live. So depending on the country you live, the code is going to change. The life load used when designing a structure can vary between rooms in a building. For example, a mechanical room in the office building you may work at. We have a higher life load than your office. Since there are often very heavy mechanical equipment in this room compared to a few people and some furnitures found in your office. Other vertical loads that are taken into account when we design a structure are the ones caused by snow load and rain load. The weight of snow and rain should not be ignored as it is its weight after an extreme storm can often be heavier than the weight of the roof structure that supports it. Now you know this, let's now discuss the lateral load which you need to take into consideration when designing a building. The lateral load that are applied to structures include wind load, seismic load, and earth load. This load acts in the direction perpendicular to the building walls and roof system. Lateral load on a building are usually resisted by walls and brazing. When you see a large steel in the window or expose someone else in a building, this is often one of the elements used to resist lateral load imposed on the structure. Wind load can be applied towards a surface of a building or structures, but it can also be applied away from the building, causing a suction force. 
These are called positive and negative pressure. When load on a structure gets greater, the higher they are applied to a structure. On a high-rise building, the wind pressure is significantly higher at the peak of the structure compared to at the ground level. If you have ever been outside during an intense windstorm, you can understand how large this wind force can be and why it is very very important to design a structure to resist this load. Earthquakes are what cause seismic loading on a structure. Seismic load used in designing structure will vary depending on where the structure is, relatively to seismic zone and the potential for earthquakes. For example, I live in Cyprus where we currently don't have to worry about designing structures for seismic load because the chances of earthquake occurring here is very low. But in places like California or China, seismic loading is much more of a concern and the additional structural elements required to resist this load can be very extensive. The magnitude of seismic load when an earthquake occurs is directly related to the weight of the building. Buildings with heavy materials such as concrete will have to be designed for a greater seismic loading compared to a light frame steel structure. Earth load occurs when soil is built up against a wall causing lateral earth pressure. This load can be seen on basement foundation walls, they can be seen on retaining walls, and they can also be seen on tunnels. The magnitude of this lateral load is dependent on the type of soil built up against the structure and the depth of the soil. For example, a house with a very high basement would likely to have foundation walls that will have to resist high lateral loading from the soil built up against it if the basement was fully underground. This can be one of the causes of cracking seen in basement walls if the wall was not built strong enough to resist this lateral load. If water is allowed to build up against the wall, lateral load from hydrostatic pressure would need to be designed for. Installing a whipping tie system is a way to prevent water from building up against the basement wall. So, these are the types of load a structural designer needs to consider when designing a building. And they are very important to take into consideration because if not, you might be putting the building at risk of failing due to this type of load. So it is very very important that you take this load into consideration when you are designing a building. So hopefully this video has helped you get a good understanding of what load are considered when designing a structure. And if you want to learn more about load and how they affect structures or civil engineering topics in general, then it will do a good if you can hit the red subscribe button below this video and also turn on the bell notification icon to get notified when i upload this type of videos you can also check out my other videos to learn other civil engineering topics so with that being said this is going to be the end of this video you all take good care of yourself bye bye